Hello lovely people of YouTube and welcome back to Mark on Life. So this week I want to talk about the joy that is editing. So let's do it. So before anything else, as usual, I just want to thank everybody for watching last week's episode of Real Perspectives, which was The Terminator. Um, this one was the most technically difficult one so far so I'm glad that people enjoyed it uh, if you haven't seen it so far I will put a link in the description below um, and I'll put a link to all the episodes if you haven't seen any of them you can start from the beginning so editing editing is one of the parts of the process of making content that I was never able to do um, the first video of this type I made was a Robocop parody that I made a couple of years ago and for that I hired everybody in I called in so many favors I had people shooting it I had somebody editing it everybody was professional and so uh, it was all out of my hands I delegated kind of every part of the process which was difficult in some ways because it meant that I had no um, part of the process in terms of the actual editing itself rather um, seeing a cut making suggestions and then seeing the next cut so I think the first foray into editing for me was um, self-tapes. So uh, for those who don't know uh, what a self-tape is, when an actor can't do uh, a live audition, sometimes they can do a self-tape. So you record a video, much like I am now, and send that to the casting director instead. So they are quite simple videos, you know, you have a little name and introduction, and then you just do a couple of scenes on tape. So for that, I really was only editing um, in iMovie, in the, the app on the iPhone, because it really only needed trimming and maybe adding a name or something like that. Um, so it was quite simple uh, and something I was able to do. Beyond that, I thought I would need something a bit more. Now, I know people are worried about um, money and being able to afford equipment and um, editing programs and all that kind of stuff. There are free ones that do the job. If you have a uh, Mac, then it will come with iMovie, which has a load of options and is a, is a pretty decent but simple um, editing suite. I think there's uh, VideoPad, Lightworks, and even Windows Movie Maker if you're on PC and Windows, which is, of course, it won't have the options of the more complicated ones, but can still make a simple video if needed. Um, Right now, I'm editing on um, Adobe Premiere CC, Creative Cloud, which is a much bigger, much more professional editing suite. You don't need anything near that, but this time, because I wanted to learn the process of editing while I was doing it, I thought I would upgrade to a, a professional quality one. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. So like I said, part of the process of making Real Perspectives was to be able to do every part of the production myself. Um, and so editing, was one of the hardest parts of that process. So what did I do first? Straight to YouTube. There are so many tutorials online, on YouTube specifically, that can teach you everything. And I don't just mean sort of, you know, a very specific technique or advanced thing, everything. I went on a tutorial, I forget the name now, if I find it, I'll put it in the description as well, which literally went through every single part of um, Adobe Premiere CC everything, every single menu, every option, uh, too much in my opinion if you you know if you're going to make a simple video enough to be uh, professionally aware of the program which is fantastic that it's out there um, but it is. There are also some paid ones which I'm sure are even better and very very exhaustive but there's loads of great stuff out there for free so look and you will find. So how do I edit an episode of Real Perspectives? Um, well, the thing that I was really uh, interested in was developing a workflow. So a sort of um, smoothness of the process, because otherwise what happens is you, you, get, you have a problem in an episode, which happens, you find the solution, but if that doesn't become part of your workflow, it becomes the same problem every time. So it's fine struggling and having the problem as, as long as you take that solution and put it into your workflow so that, that it doesn't happen again. That's what I wanted for this. So the setup is, is similar each time. The first sort of 30 seconds of an episode tends to be 
uh, a joke, you know, the, the directly related to the movie itself. Um, and at the moment it tends to be to music. So I have a piece of music um, and I'll, I'll edit to, to the time, which again, for me is very um, difficult but fun as well. If you have an editing program that um, goes frame by frame with the sound, which any good one should do, you can you can easily edit to the to the exact correct frame, the, the you know the frame that has the right beat of music or the right word or whatever. And then we have the intro. Um, again, for workflow, I have sort of made my own little retrospective intro now with um, music from Purple Planet. Thank you, Purple Planet, um, which is free music for anyone that wants it. Um, and then about three to four minutes of actual content. Within the content, I tend to, I don't get huge amounts of coverage because the, the footage I do is mockumentary style. So it's all usually one shot for each thing. And uh, watch through all of it. So, you know, writing notes at the same time of which take is good or which part of take is good so that later I can uh, drop those bits into the timeline. So then you add all of your footage. I have um, folders, so I have uh, all the, the video footage in one folder, all the uh, behind the scenes photos in another folder, all the audio in another folder, and I drop them in separately into Adobe Premiere. So you have all the video, all the uh, photos, and all the audio. So that you can go and find all your files really easily when you want to put them in the timeline. So the first thing is a really simple um, first cut. So you're putting an assembly together. Uh, you you know you drop all the the uh, the takes that you like into that timeline, and that is your your first assembly. It's going to be way longer than it should be, and then you go back and tidy it up. Normally for me it means shortening everything, um, but then the process when you have the what they call the um, the offline cut, so the 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 order is correct. Then I can go and put everything on top of it. So I can put the B-roll footage on top of it, which is other footage that will go on top of the audio, the photos that will go on top of it. Sometimes uh, with a black frame under them, sometimes not. Sometimes music, all that sorts of stuff. This last few episodes have been a lot more technically difficult than before. For example. In the Halloween episode, um, I shot a, um, a whole scene with no audio because the, the mic that I have uh, came unplugged. Something that happened. So I couldn't go and shoot, back, uh, shoot it again because I didn't have time. So I had to do ADR. Um, again, for those who don't know what ADR is, ADR is, um, stands for Audio Dialogue Replacement or Automatic Dialogue Replacement, which is the process of redubbing sound that wasn't recorded properly um, on set at the time. So you might you might notice it in movies. If you think uh, that that like, that sounds a little bit sort of odd, sometimes it's because it's ADR. It should be done brilliantly and professionally, and you shouldn't be able to notice. But sometimes you can. Um, you record the sound separately and then sort of place it over and hopefully it matches up. If it's done professionally in a booth, it's done, you do it to the footage so you can match the performance to it. Um, so for that one, I had to, to do uh, ADR. And then um, for Terminator, the last uh, latest episode, I had to do the, the whole Terminator vision uh, aspect, which I thought I might have to do in uh, Adobe After Effects, which I don't have. Um, I thought, God, that sounds massively complicated, doing all this sort of red vision and and sort of um, the workings of the analytics of the Terminator going on. But actually going through the, um, the systems of Adobe, it's quite doable. It's not easy, it's quite time consuming, but um, it goes on one layer by layer. You put um, effects onto uh, each piece of footage or adding titles on top of it, etc., etc. And you just build it up until it looks until it looks sort of right. I hope it looks okay. I think it looks kind of cool for my first attempt at it because all these things are my first attempts. Um, I haven't done any of this kind of thing before. Every new thing that I'm editing is new, so um, I'm learning as I'm going along. I think the main um, thing that I've learned in editing is how to do it cleanly because when I started and um, I have a few friends there, editors, that would look at my timeline for the first one and shudder 
at the horror of it because it's an absolute hack job where I've taken a piece of footage and then chopped it to pieces and put it piece there and a piece there and a piece there and a piece there and it's an absolute it looks okay when it, when it's exported which you say well that's all that matters which I, I guess is sort of true but in terms of if you had to go back and re-edit or look at it it's an utter mess so I'm learning to edit properly now where you have your footage and it's all layer on top of layer on top of layer so that if you wanted to then take a layer off or do something your footage underneath is still clean is still exactly what it what it is normally so that's that's the whole point of this is to become a better editor pick up tricks pick up the uh, the ways of the professionals so that I can actually even though these to some people might seem incredibly simple videos for me they are quite tricky and so to, to get better at them is all I'm trying to do. So I think that about wraps it up. Um, have you ever edited anything? If you have, um, tell me how you do it. Leave a comment in the comments below and tell me what do you find difficult? What do you find easy? Do you have any tips and tricks for anybody else that might be watching who can uh, make your editing process easier? That would be great for, uh, for me and everybody. The next vlog is gonna be about uh, self-shooting because it's something that I have found very difficult um, so I'm going to want to talk about that. And the next episode of Real Perspectives, I'm going to announce it now, brrr, is Never Ending Story. One of my all-time favourite uh, movies from my childhood. So I hope you might look forward to that one. So, from Mark on Life, I'll see you next time.